Hello and welcome to the first part of this video about how to program ESP32 in C programming language by using ESP IDF framework. In this part we are gonna to install Ubuntu desktop as a virtual machine on the VirtualBox host. So basically this part will be about installation of Ubuntu desktop as a virtual machine. If you have watched videos on my channel, you can notice that in all of my videos I have used Lua for programming ESP32. And applications written in Lua is on the fourth layer. Third layer is Lua firmware, second layer is ESP IDF, and first layer is physical layer, so ESP32 itself. So by using methods which I will explain in this video, we can write our own firmware on the third layer. Advantages of that will be for sure in dependency of other firmwares like Lua and we can be closer to the hardware, which is for sure better. Ok, let's get to work. First we will need to have installed is VirtualBox. This product is free and you can download them from the official website. Once when you have installed VirtualBox, go to Google and search for download Ubuntu desktop. Click on the first link and on this page download latest version of Ubuntu. Currently last version is 19.10 but I have already downloaded version 19.04 so I will install 19.04 version of Ubuntu. Ok, open VirtualBox now and create new virtual machine by clicking on the button new. For the name, put whatever you like. I will go with Ubuntu 19.04. For type, choose Linux and version is Ubuntu 64-bit. Click Next. For memory, I will go with 4 GB and click Next. Here, check Create a virtual hard disk now. Next. For hard disk space, I will go with 15 GB and click Create. Now go to settings and then storage. Click here where it says empty and by clicking on this icon choose your downloaded Ubuntu ESO file. Click OK. Open settings again and go to USB. Click on this plus icon and here we need to attach ESP UART bridge controller. To see them here we need to plug ESP into PC first. So, I will plug ESP to my PC and now click on this plus icon again. Now you can see that CP2102 bridge controller is here. I need to mention here that you need to have installed driver for the bridge on your PC. To install them just search for CP2102X driver, click on the first link and download them from Silicon Labs website. Ok, after you add UART bridge to the USB devices of virtual machine, click OK and now we can start VM by clicking on the start icon. On the first screen choose language which you prefer, I will go with English. Click button install Ubuntu. On the second step choose keyboard layout and click continue. Here we can choose minimal installation because we don't need games and media players. Click continue. For installation type choose we can leave option of erase disk and install Ubuntu. Click install now. On this confirmation click continue. Choose your location for time zone purposes and click continue. Ok, here you need to type your informations. I will type my name. Computer name will be abobia1904, username will be abobia, and here I will type my password. Click continue, and now wait for about 10 minutes. Ok, once when the installation is done, you can click restart now. On restarting, Ubuntu will say that you need to remove installation medium. Ok. Close virtual machine and go to settings, then storage. Here we can see that no ESO file is attached. We can go back and start VM again. After a couple of seconds you will see this login screen. Type your credentials and click sign in. In this first run wizard you can skip on the first step. 
On the second step we can choose that we don't want to send system informations. Click next and that's it, Ubuntu is installed. But one more thing. Because window of VM is quite small, to increase the resolution of VM we can go to view then virtual screen 1. But here we can see that all resolutions are disabled. To enable different resolution go to devices then insert guest additions CD image. Ubuntu will detect inserted CD and just click run. Appropriate packages and modules will be installed. And now if we go to virtual screen 1 we can see that we have all resolutions enabled. I will choose resolution 1600 by 900. As you can see Ubuntu offer me to install latest updates and why not? I will install them. I want to be up to date. After updates is installed you need to restart Ubuntu by clicking on the restart now button. And that's it for this part. See ya in next part. Hello and welcome to the second part of this video. In this part we are gonna to set up tool chain for projects compilation. So let's get to work. Because we will use terminal very often, you can open them here by search for word term and once when you have them open, right click here on terminal icon and add terminal to the favorites. That will stick terminal to this left vertical navigation bar and we can easily access them next time. To compile with ESP IDF you need to get the following packages by executing next apt get command. Add your user to dialout group with next command. Go to home folder and with command ls check the content of this folder. With command mkdir create new folder with name esp. cd inside of esp folder. With git clone command we are gonna to clone latest version of esp idf repository. Don't forget to put recursive flag here because we need to clone submodules as well. When cloning process is done, go inside of ESPIDF folder. Run ESPIDF tools installation shell script. Once when installation shell script download all necessary tools, we need to set up correct environment variables. ESP IDF provides another script which does that, so execute next command and notice that we have one empty space between two dots. To automate this step, making ESP IDF tools available in every terminal, we are gonna to add this line to dot profile script. Save this script. To check if ESP IDF were added to path we can use print env command. And if we check output we can see that Xtensa, OpenOCD and other ESP IDF tools are now present and available in the path environment variable. Ok, now go and reboot your Ubuntu. And part 2 is done. See ya in next part. Welcome to the third and last part of this video. In this part we are gonna to install Visual Studio Code for programming with ESP IDF. Along with that we will build and flash simple application. Ok, we are gonna to install Visual Studio Code from terminal, so open it and prepare yourself for executing a lot of commands. All commands will be available in description down below, so you can go and copy paste them. Ok, first update the packages index and install dependencies by typing next command. Import Microsoft GPG key using following we get command. Previous command has returned response ok, which means that Microsoft GPG key is imported. With next command enable Visual Studio Code repository. 
Once when APT repository is enabled, install the latest version of Visual Studio Code. That's it. Visual Studio Code is installed, but before we open it, let's first do a few more things. OK, go inside of ESP folder. Run ls command and we can see that we have here only ESP IDF folder. Copy hello world example application inside of current folder by typing next command. Run ls command again and we can see that now we have hello world folder here. cd into hello world and run make menu config. We can leave all settings as default for now and press S for save. Press escape now for exit configuration. Now run code dot command to open application up in Visual Studio Code. Once when Visual Studio Code is open, go to extensions, search for C slash C++ and here install this extension created by Microsoft. Once when extension is installed, go back and create .vs code folder. Inside of that folder, create c underline cpp underline properties dot json file. Inside of this file, write next json configuration. As I mentioned before, all commands and configuration will be available in description down below. We can save and close this configuration file now and go to main application file. I will slightly change the code, I will just put my name here and save this file. In Visual Studio Code integrated terminal, I will run command make to build the application. Once when building process is complete, you can plug in your ESP into PC and don't forget to put them into programming mode by pressing and hold boot button and then press reset button in the same time. Ok, when we have ESP plugged in into PC in programming mode, we can run make flash command in terminal to flash the application into ESP32. After flashing process is done, we can execute make monitor to see what ESP sends to us through the serial port. We can see that there is our custom message. That's it. Now you can go back to Visual Studio Code and start programming your ESP32 chip in C programming language. Good luck and peace.